Good morning, I'm Paul Mueller. News Channel 8 is, of course, your local election headquarters. A mix of newcomers and career politicians are entering statewide races in the 2018 election cycle. On top of that, with a controversial president in the White House, Republican voters will have a lot on their minds when they cast their ballots. One key lawmaker who is watching the political climate is outgoing State House Speaker Richard Corcoran. He became Speaker of the House just last year after serving in the chamber since 2010. He currently represents the 37th District, and that includes part of Pasco County. He joins us live in the studio this morning for our Sunday one-on-one. -on -one. Good to have you here. Thanks for having me. Yeah, Paul. nice to see you again. Let's start off with uh, one special election that happened last week, the one we're talking about, State Senate uh, District 40. That includes Miami-Dade. That seat held by Republican Frank Artiles, who resigned last spring amongst the accusations that he had. It went to uh, Democrat Annette Tadeo. Um, is this, do you believe, a sign of things to come uh, with, with voters? No, not at all. I think that if you look at that race, first of all, it's a Democrat seat. Uh, we were lucky enough to get that seat in the last election cycle just through gr good grassroots campaigning and being right on, on the issues of that day for the last election cycle. So this cycle, it's a special election. It's very difficult to tell. Uh, you had uh, the effect of Hurricane Irma on the election. So I think the turnout was lower than, than normal. If the turnout had been normal, like it was in the November election, I think Republicans still take that Democrat seat and hold it. So one seat doesn't make it, it doesn't represent a whole state is what I'm hearing. No, not at all. Okay. Not at all. And, but you got to keep in mind that was a Democrat seat. It wasn't a Republican seat. The right. fact that we even held it to begin with, I think, is a testimony to the fact that what we were campaigning on, the issues that they went out and said, this is how we're going to make a difference in your lives, were more, more prevalent than from the Democratic Party. You mentioned the hurricane, and of course we know the devastation, the destruction that's going on there. Uh, we're also anticipating a lot of uh, Puerto Ricans to move here to Florida. That's what we're hearing at least right now. Could this wave of Puerto Ricans uh, actually change the uh, Florida political landscape? Well, I think uh, this is going to have a huge impact on our budget. Um, but the, the most important thing is what, what they're undergoing right now in Puerto Rico is, is, is a devastation never seen before. And so to the extent that we can help those folks get over here, uh, get uh, assimilated in and, and, and their sta families reestablished here, whatever we can do to help, uh, I think is the priority. Um, but I think as you see over the last election cycles, uh, we have three uh, Puerto Rican Republican members in the House of Representatives uh, alone. So I think wh how they'll play out in the political process is yet to be seen, but I think it's from a, a conservative Republican standpoint, we're getting uh, tremendous uh, support and inroads with the Puerto Rican community and actually have more Puerto Rican House members than, than the Democrats. And do. that, as we know, is, is a big change because they tend to vote de Democrat. I think, you know, I don't know, it's, it seems like uh, maybe traditionally, I think the, if you took the entire island, um, you could say that, but I think that of the population that's immigrating into um, Florida, I think that you're seeing it's a very, it's a very even keeled um, registration. President Trump, uh, some analysts believe the, uh, that he may be starting to uh, turn off more moderate uh, Republican voters and independents in future races. You were openly critical at one point, openly critical. Let me read some of the things. Uh, you called him repugnant, uh, of questionable character, ignorant, and of, quote, phony cancer on conservatism. Now you seem to like President Trump a lot. Yeah. What has changed there? What uh, has made you done the 180? No, it hasn't. I haven't done a 180. I've, I'm, a, I'm a true conservative. I've been a principled conservative my entire life. And as, as you read the quote, my point was I thought that leading up to the presidential campaign in the November elections, that President Trump at that point in time, I don't care what issue it was that you cared as a conservative, you could find some sort of video of President Trump maybe a year, two years earlier, being on the opposite side. I don't care if it was life, if it was guns, if it was uh, taxes, you name it. Um, and so my point to him what, to, to, during the campaign was I didn't think he was a true conservative. But since he's been elected, there's not one thing, what, starting with the appointment of his cabinet, some of the greatest, I think, true conservatives, his vice presidential choice in Mike Pence, the biggest being uh, choosing Gorsuch for the Supreme Court. I think Gorsuch will be one of the great jurists of all time. And so when, when you see that, then, hey, if you govern as a conservative, I'll be with you. But if you don't, I'm gonna, I, I will not be with you. So you're saying uh, actions speak louder than words is absolutely, what I'm hearing. Absolutely. Absolutely. So on the political trail, it was it was one thing. Then when you saw him get, get into office, you saw his actions, and then you thought, oh, let me change my mind from saying a, a phony cancer on conservatism. That's right. I don't. Th I think that the reality is he has been as conservative, more conservative than any president that I've seen in my lifetime, and that's a that's a that's a high compliment. Hurricane Irma and the damage and destruction left in its wake here in Florida. Uh, many uh, counties still dealing with it. Some inland counties, in, in particular. How would you rate the response so far? I think that if you were to say from top to bottom, starting with uh, the preparations, 
going all the way through to the response. I think that uh, Florida, out of the 50 states, is the paradigm for how you handle natural disasters. I think Governor Scott has done a phenomenal job. I think that we are as prepared as you possibly could be. You've got to remember, uh, Paul, this is a storm for the first time that hit every single county for the most part. 67 counties were affected. Mm -hmm. We had to evacuate uh, literally a third of our people. A third of our power for the most part was out. Um, all of those things taken into consideration, are the, uh, um, a restoration of almost 7 million people's power in, in 10 days or less. Um, pe all the evacuation people came in and came back all safely. Uh, so I think that what we've done is really good, but the, the point of us appointing a select committee was to say there's always things that we can improve on and go out there and say what can we do better now that we have this, this whole um, result where, we, where the entire state was affected. What, what can we do better? And that brings up a point. Are we ready? That's, that's a big question. And here in Tampa Bay, a lot of people say, no, we're definitely not ready. 15 seconds on this one because I have a very important question to ask you after that. Well, we're going to look at everything. We're going to look at hardening our grid, having gas reserves so people don't have to wait in line, uh, better evacuation routes, safer uh, environment for our, our seniors and nursing homes. All of those things will be looked at by the legislature. You know what I'm going to ask you right now is our final question. Race for governor. It's, what, 9.20 on October 1st right now. Are you, a nine, 10 to, uh, I should say, 9.40. Are you in or are you out? I tell everyone that I, it's a great honor. One of the biggest honors I've ever had professionally is to be an elected speaker and represent the people in the Florida House. We had a tremendous session. We're going to go crashing against the status quo and, and, and the liberals, a liberal elite again, and we're going to try to have another great session. If that goes well, Paul, in March, we'll make that decision. And, and if it goes well and we think that we have an opportunity to make a difference in people's lives, then, then, then we'll do it. But we'll make that decision in March. So no yes, no no. And does Adam Putnam play a key part in if you run or not? No, I, I, I think mean, I, he, 20 years years in Florida politics there. I think people who know me well and people who have, uh, you know, we've gone head to head on know that I don't really care who my opponent is. I'll fight anybody, any place, anytime. You've got the mouth for it. <laughs> All right. And I say that in a kind way. Uh, as we go, Richard Corcoran, we appreciate you being here in the studio this morning. Thanks a lot, Paul. I appreciate Thank it. Thank you for your time.